the Platypus 70 Sniper Rifle, a bolt-action sniper with a lot of power and a lot of kick. Now, stats for this bad boy are a magazine of 5, total ammo of 30, rate of fire of 60, damage of 294, accuracy of 92, stability of 8, concealment of 8, and threat of 28. Now, you can put two mods on this gun, either a gadget or a sight, nothing new. And the only mod unique to this weapon is the iron sight, which I have equipped. And if we actually compare these stats to another sniper rifle, we can see that they are incredibly similar. The Mosin Nagant has the same magazine, the same rate of fire, and the same damage as the Platypus 70. And even the accuracy and stability are similar too. So if you've used the Mosin Nagant before, or even the R93, then the Platypus 70 will feel very similar to those weapons. So how does it look in some gameplay? So, I don't think there's much to say about this weapon. Looking at the stats, it's highly underwhelming in terms of originality, just like the Baby Deagle was. But to compensate for it, both of these weapons took on characteristics of some of the currently most powerful weapons in terms of versatility and viability in higher difficulty play. The performance of this weapon is going to be the exact same as that of the Mosin Nagant, needing only one shot to kill just about anything on Deathwish except for tasers and bulldozers, which requires two or more, respectively. Personally, despite the fact that the stats are the same, but the Platypus is objectively better because it has more total ammo, I still prefer the Mosin Nagant. It's mostly just because of the weapon itself, I prefer the look of the Mosin, and the sounds of it too, they're just wonderful. But that's just me, there really isn't much to say about that. I guess what I really wanted to talk about more in this video is not really specifically the Platypus Sniper, but rather just the community weapons in general. Recently, we got the community LMG, the KSP-58, and that weapon also had very little originality to the stats, mirroring those of its predecessor, the KSP. Hell, we even got the community perk deck, the ex-president, and while that is fundamentally different than Grinder, it still mirrors its purpose pretty closely. So, so far it seems like they just want to add weapons and stuff that are free that rival some of the strongest weapons that have existed. And, well, by strong I mean strong in terms of usefulness and versatility, not damage. The Mosin Nagant and the KSP were some of the most powerful weapons in their category, and Grinder, of course, was one of the most powerful perk decks to use. So, if Overkill were to follow this trend, what we might see next is some sort of explosive weapon being added. Probably with the ability to use fire grenades as well. I mean, this direction of additions is good, even if it is a little dull since they aren't much different than existing weapons, but I know for me, I feel like it's a little on the late side. LMGs and snipers have been a part of this game for an incredibly long time now, and only now are they starting to add more of these community-based weapons that are of different weapon types. I mean, all I can really say is at least these so-called community weapons are weapons that are actually decent. I mean, most of the community weapons in the past have been proven to be some of the best of their type, like the Judge Shotgun, the Interceptor Pistol, hell, even the Toothbrush. When it came out, it was one of the best melees in the game. So, I guess right now I'm more interested in the rebalancing of the weapons. Recently, we had a huge overhaul on the weapons, one that essentially made every obsolete weapon good, on top of good weapons still being good. And when the Point Break Heist came out, there was a small rebalance again, but overall the weapons didn't change that much from the big rebalance. I just really don't know what they were trying to do with the rebalancing, because on one hand, right now, Every weapon is good, which I guess is a slap to the face to any pure meta users, but on the other hand, so many of the weapons became boring. Like, before, most weapons had differing stats, and it gave them character, but now most of them just have stats that are shared among other weapons, and sometimes to a fault. Take for example, the Six Shooters, the Bronco, the Mateba, and the Peacemaker. Functionally, they're all the same, since their stats are so similar. But this makes absolutely no sense when the Peacemaker is much more difficult to use than the other six shooters. And there's really no reason not to just use the Bronco. And then there's changes, like the sniper rifles, where before they had abysmal hipfire accuracy, but for whatever reason, they decided to change it so that it's laser accurate. 
Hell, there's even an achievement now to use hipfire for snipers that came out with the Point Break update. I mean, I really just don't know what they're planning on doing with the future changes to the weapons. And they did say that in the near future, they'd be doing it again, too. So, how this affects community weapons will be pretty interesting. But, like I said, adding a sniper rifle for everyone is a step in the right direction, I think. Even if it is a little late. Better late than never, right? Anyway, you can't really go wrong with using this weapon. It's powerful, it's accurate, it has penetration. That's everyone's favorite mechanic, right? 